Then I get to the big speech, the soliloquy, and I'm right in the spotlight. I think to myself, Christ, the hell with it. Just do it. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind, and I finish the speech, and I look out, and there's the kid. He's listening. The whole audience, complete silence, total focus, and by opposing, end them. And I was Hamlet. And it lasted for like a minute or so, and I was back in hell, and I stayed there. But for that one speech, I had it. Hamlet. <laughs> See, we already got Angelo, who gave you up as who passed him that black Mercedes. Ha, ah, the thing is, when you say have, I interpret that as own. Now I see you say have as in, in my possession. That's enough to lock you up for murder right now. But then will you say I didn't kill no one? Well, we'll just let the court sort that one out. Meantime, we'll ring your P.O. I, I wasn't. I just passed the ride on to Angelo for a friend. Who's the friend? I told him. I told her Ross Clark. I help him, but I don't take the hit. You tell Verna when it... I'm no rat. Verna got a last name. McGee. Haven't spoke to him for five years. Call me out of the blue. Say, can I get the cash ready? Vernon said to meet him in Great Neck with my truck. He threw me a grand. Take me to the cell. I see this great white well with brains out on the carpet. I don't ask no questions. What happened to the body? Help Vernon stuff it in a barrel, took it to the river. You just happen to have a barrel. Brooklyn style. Jamaicans used to send goodies back to the islands. A guy calls you hadn't spoken to in five years. He's sitting on a dead body. You don't know who's coming home, and you stay to help? When I was incarcerated, Vernon dropped up groceries for my poor sick mother. And I needed the cash. Don't send me back. I fought against the government. Don't do that. Please, please, they'll torture me. They will torture me. Don't do that. Please, I fought against the government. That's against the law. You're going to suffocate him. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. We're all supposed to be behind this point. Go. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I don't speak your language. Mububunso. Besube fat truck, Dr. Vance. Dr. Vance? I'm so sorry. So you're an actor. <laughs> you really like to play that guessing game. I'm actually here to teach. There must be some very special kids for you to come all the way here to teach. Actually, I'm a professor. Nice one. I don't see too many handsome professors running around here. <laughs> Thank you. What about yourself? What do you do? You know what? I'll be right back. Did I say or do something wrong? Hold on. I'll be right back. This time, the conductor is a whitey. <laughs> yes, I see. My face and hands just happen to be black, but my bum is as white as yours, so I can't sit here. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you. He is flabbergasted because he has never heard of anyone who is black and white striped like a zebra before. Part of me is black, I tell him, and part of me is white. I am in multiracial society all by myself. Show me, he says. Okay, I say. So in front of all the white ladies, I undoes my belt and I sticks out my bum and take off my trousers so I can show him his whites. Okay, he says, you can sit there on the white man's seat. But then I say to the conductor, hey, mister, you better check that some of these ladies are sitting in the right seats. You cannot tell just by looking at their faces. Some of them will have black bombs and you don't know, so you lose your job. 
Yeah, I did.